In Romans 12 verses 1 to 8, Paul issues a transformative call to believers. What does it mean to present our bodies as living sacrifices? How can we embrace diverse spiritual gifts for the benefit of the Christian community? Join us in exploring these verses that challenges us to live out our faith with dedication and fervor. Hello brothers and sisters, what a wonderful day it is to gather together and study the Word of God. I invite you all to join me on an expedition through the Bible. The conduct of a genuine Christian is met manifest by the Holy Spirit that lives within. He renews our minds to align our being into the will of God so that our conduct reflects the very likeness of Christ. When Christ came to earth, he set an example for all believers to follow. And this is how a Christian must be, by following the very footsteps of Christ. Though it is difficult for us to follow, the Spirit helps us be more like Him by transforming us. He takes our being and places us in the same wavelength of Christ so that our actions exhibit the very nature of Christ. But before we go back to our study, let us have a quick recap of what we learned in our previous discussion. First, we look at our relationship with God. From our side of the relationship, we learned that we need to yield to His will, the way to Christian consecration and conduct. We must offer God our entire bodies, our minds, our personalities, our actions as a living sacrifice. And this marks our identity as God's children. With our whole bodies, we reflect who we are in Christ when we yield to His will. Secondly, we realize that conforming to the world robs us of our identity in Christ. We cannot conduct ourselves as genuine Christians if we heed to the voice of the world that dictates how one should act. To be identified as genuine Christians in our conduct, we must be ourselves and yield to God's will so that the Holy Spirit can renew our minds and align our whole being to the will of God. Every human life on earth has been made for the purpose and they are equipped with different abilities that make them unique. And this uniqueness is our identity perfected by the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. And our identity as Christians is found within us and is not of the world. And finally, we discussed our relationship to the gifts of the Spirit. God has given each of us a gift to be used for His glory in the body of Christ. But instead of using it with the level of faith we have, many of us think highly of ourselves and tend to strive for higher positions that are not ours to have. We have our very own purpose in this world and are made just the way we are with a unique gift and personality. So let's embrace what we have and walk with it. For when we do well with the little we have, God will equip us with more gifts and open the doors to more opportunities to glorify His name and to share His love everywhere we go. In the meantime, do you know what your gift is? What role do you have in the body of Christ? If you still haven't found it, let's return to Paul and find out what those gifts are and who we are made to be. Welcome, dear friends, to another study of Romans with Through the Bible. Let's continue today to listen to Paul as he speaks of what is expected of our response to the gospel. So let's begin. Romans 12.6 Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, where the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Gifts in the Greek word comes from the same stem as the word for grace. It can be translated as grace or free gift and it is what the Spirit of God gives us. He gave to the church men who had the gift of a prophet or a teacher etc. 
having then gifts each member of the body of christ has a gift and a function to perform differing means that the gifts differ it does not mean that some folk do not have a gift every individual in the church has a gift and the gift is part and parcel of the grace of god to us when god saves you and puts you in the body of believers you are to function you are not to function as a machine but as a member of a body a living organization when the gift is exercised it is confirmed by the power of the holy spirit every believer needs to test his gift if you feel that you have a certain gift and you are using it you ought to test it analyze your effectiveness are you really a blessing to folk are you building up the church or are you dividing the church prophecy here does not refer to prediction but to any message from god notice that prophecy is to be done in proportion that is a mathematical term to god's provision of the faith and the power to match the gift romans 12:7 all ministry let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching ministering is performing an act of service referring to a manifold ministry with practical implications there are multiple forms of service in the body of believers which this gift covers setting up chairs and giving out song books in a ministry some folk do not have a gift of speaking but they do have a gift of service there is this one dear lady who can put on a dinner that will make everybody happy now that is her gift she may not have made a good president of the missionary society and you wouldn't want her to sing in the choir but you want to put on a church dinner for some purpose she is the one to get to ministering includes many gifts my friend romans 12:8 or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity he that ruleth with diligence he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness exhortation is the greek word literally a calling near or a calling for in other words exhortation is comfort some folk have the gift of being able to comfort There are pastors who are not preachers and they know it. But if one was sick or somebody lost a loved one, now he is the man that would have come to visit the sick and the bereaved because he can comfort. He that giveth is he that shares his earthly possessions. God may have given you a gift of making money and that is a gift. There are several Christian businessmen who have the midas touch now that is their gift he that ruleth with diligence refers to the gift of leadership there are certain men who are leaders and they need to exercise their gift in the church so that everything might be done decently and in order the business of the church requires a man with the gift of administration he that showeth mercy indicates the gift of performing acts of kindness for instance There are some believers who can bring a sunbeam into a sick room while others cast a spell of gloom. Now we move on to relationship to other believers. Romans 12:9 Let love be without dissimulation about that which is evil cleave to that which is good. Let love be without dissimulation that is without hypocrisy. Don't pat another believer on the back and say something that you don't mean. let love be without hypocrisy abhor that which is evil means to express your hatred of that which is evil when you find something wrong in the church bring it to the attention of the proper authorities if you are on the board of directors and you find things are being done which are not honest you are to stand up for the truth there are too many good bodies in the church these sweet folk who have in the interstitial fortitude to stand for that which is honorable this is the reason many good fundamental churches are in trouble today we need men and women with backbone to express their hatred for that which is evil cleave to that which is good cleave means to stick like adhesive tape 
to be welded or cemented together with the good things. The believer should always be identified with good things rather than shady or questionable practices. Romans 12, 10-11 Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. My, how wonderful these things are! Have a coat of honor and be aglow with the Spirit of God. Never flag in zeal. Have a zeal for the things of God. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In other words, as to your brotherly love, have family affection one to another. Farrar puts it in this language. Love the brethren in the faith as though they were brethren in blood. For example, three men are sitting together. Two of the men are identical twins. One twin is a Christian and the other is not. Sitting with these men is a believer from Africa. His culture, background and language are all different. The color of his skin is different, but he knows the Lord as Savior. The Christian twin is actually closer to the man from Africa than he is to his twin brother. My friend, you ought to be nicer to your fellow believer because you will have to live with him throughout eternity. You had better start getting along now and practice putting up with his peculiar ways. However, he will have a new body then and he will be rid of his old nature and you will also. It will make better for both of you. Not slothful in business is better translated, never flag in zeal. It has nothing to do with business. Luther gives it this translation. In regard to zeal, be not lazy. Fervent in spirit or a glow with the spirit suggests that our zeal and enthusiasm should be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Serving the Lord points everything in Christian conduct toward this focal point. Romans 12, 12-14 Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoicing in hope should be the portion of the believer. The circumstances of the believer may not warrant rejoicing. The contrary may be true, but he sees the future and in hope projects himself into other circumstances which are more favorable. In a church service, they were giving favorite scripture verses. So one brother said that his favorite verse was, It came to pass. Now everyone looked puzzled. The preacher stood up and said, Brother, how in the world can it came to pass be your favorite? His answer was, When I have trouble and when I have problems, I like to read that verse. It came to pass. And I know that my trouble or my problem has come to pass. It hasn't come to stay. He was looking for a new day out there. And that is what Paul has in mind when he says, Rejoicing in hope. Continuing instant in prayer is to be a man or woman of prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints means sharing the necessities of life with needy believers. A great many churches make a great deal of having a fund for the poor. But how much do they use it? God expects us to share what He has given to us with fellow believers who are in need. Given to hospitality means actually to pursue hospitality. That is, we are to seek out other believers to whom we can extend hospitality. There may be a person in your neighborhood or even in your church who is introverted and retiring yet longs for Christian fellowship. We are to look him up and extend our fellowship to him. Bless them which persecute you seems to be a needless injunction for believers. Surely one believer would not persecute another, or would he? It is difficult to bless a man who is kicking you, but we are to bless and not curse. Romans 12, 15-16 Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. 
be not wise in your own conceits rejoice with them that do rejoice the world's motto is laugh and the world laughs with you weep and you weep alone but that is not true of the believer we are to enter into the joys and sorrows of other believers weep with those who weep be of the same mind one toward another doesn't mean uniformity of thought but that we are to have the mind of christ believers ought to enter emotionally into the lives of other believers i think that is something that makes genuine christians so wonderful mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate my friend let's not be afraid of associating with humble men and things of low estate Paul said to the Philippians let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus Philippians 2:5 what kind of a mind did Christ have a humble mind be not wise in your own conceits in other words stop being wise in your own opinion what an injunction that is a great many of the saints think they are spiritual giants but they are not Solomon who was a man with wisdom from God gave a very interesting injunction Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit there is more hope of a fool than of him proverbs 26:12 I wouldn't dare say a thing like that but Solomon said it Now let's look at relationship to unbelievers You and I live in a world of unbelievers what is to be our relationship with them Romans 12:17 to 18 recompense to no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men recompense to no man evil for evil the suggestion is that the believer may expect evil at the hands of the world however we are not to strike back provide things honest in the sight of all men There is nothing that can hurt the cause of Christ more than a dishonest Christian. The non-Christian is not concerned about the doctrine you hold, whether you are a pre-millennialist or whether you believe in election or free will. However, he does want to know if you are truthful or not, and he does want to know if you pay your honest debts. Are you a person that a man can depend upon? Providing things honest in the sight of all men is a lot better than giving out tracts, my friend. Let me illustrate this. A Christian man handed out a tract. What is this? asked the man who received it. The Christian replied, It is a tract and I want you to read it. To which the receiver responded, I don't read. But I will tell you what I will do. I will watch your tracks. How accurate that is. The world is watching the tracks that you make, not the tracks you give out. Don't misunderstand me. Giving out gospel tracks is important. But you had better have a life that will back them up when you give out tracks. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably. I love this because there are people that you just cannot get along with. They won't let you get along with them. A dear lady who lived alone, a wonderful Christian. She had a neighbor whom she couldn't get along with. And she wondered if somebody could come and talk with the neighbor. As the pastor was driving out there, he was thinking that since this lady has been living alone, although she was a Christian, she might be a little difficult herself. So when he got out there he talked to the neighbor well the neighbor told him what he thought of the pastor as well as the dear old lady and the pastor went back to this wonderful christian and said i don't think you need to worry any more if you can't get along with the neighbor nobody can get along with that lady the bible says as much as lieth in you it doesn't say you have to get along with the neighbor just do the best you can Romans 12:19 to 20 Dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay saith the lord therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him if he thirst 
give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. This is one of the greatest principles you will find in the word of God. Yet it is the most difficult thing for a child of God to do. When somebody hits you on one cheek, it is difficult to turn the other cheek. Many of us are like this Irishman who was hit on one cheek. So he got up and he turned the other cheek. This time the fellow hit him so hard he knocked him down. Then the Irishman got up and beat the stuffings out of the other fellow. Somebody asked him, why in the world did you do that? You turned the other cheek, why didn't you leave it at that? Well, he said, the Bible says to turn your cheek and I had only one other cheek to turn. The Lord didn't tell me what to do after that. So I did what I thought I ought to do. That is what most of us do. We find it difficult not to hit back. But the minute you and I take the matter into our own hands and attempt to work the thing out by hitting back as hard as we can, we have taken the matter out of God's control and we are no longer walking by faith. God is saying to us, You walk by faith with me and let me handle the matter for you because I will handle it in a just manner. If this person has injured you, I'll take care of him. You and I can turn these matters over to the Lord and we ought to do that. I can tell you what to do, but I confess that I find it most difficult to do it myself. But when we turn it over to the Lord, you will be pleasantly surprised how well He handles it. He does it a lot better than you and I can do. There was a man, an officer in one of the churches, who did his pastor a great injury, a terrible injury. The first thought of the pastor was to clobber him. But he remembered this passage of scripture and went to the Lord and said, Lord, I'd like to hit back and I can, but I don't think I will. I'll turn him over to you and expect you to handle him. Well, in time he saw that that man was a very unhappy man. He had troubles, friend. The Lord had taken him to the woodshed and whipped him within an inch of his life. So when he looked at the man's face, one couldn't but feel sorry for him. I wish we could always say that we turned all these matters over to the Lord. But one must confess that many times all we do is hit back. Romans 12.21 Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, stop being overcome of evil. Overcome evil by means of good. As the believer walks through this evil world with this satanic system, he cannot fight it. If you attempt to fight this satanic system, my friend, it will whip you. You cannot adopt the same worldly tactics of hate and revenge. If you do, you can be assured of defeat. Overcome evil with good. God has given the believer the good, which is the Holy Spirit. He is to walk in the Spirit. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 Paul goes on to say, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.25 Let's stop here, dear friends, and may we be led by the Spirit, that we may not react in a way that does not show who we are in Jesus. But rather, let us leave matters into God's hand and wait for God to handle it. God bless you as you see His hand in your daily challenges. Well, friends, I believe you enjoyed today's study of Through the Bible. I hope that after going through the gifts of the Spirit, you have finally recognized your gift and purpose. And I pray that you test it out and utilize your gifts in the right way in the body of Christ. There may be times when you have more than one gift or doubt whether the gift is for you, but do not worry. Ask God and let Him guide you in the way you should go. And I hope that your conduct reflects the very nature of Christ. Serve others as if you are serving God in the flesh. And stand fast in faith and be in an active communion with your fellow believers, sharing in their joy and sorrows. As we come to a close, remember, though the trials and the temptations of this life may pull you down, never lose hope. But be patient and take all your burdens to God in constant prayer. For He understands your pain 
and has promised you rest and an eternal life filled with only joy and happiness. So keep persevering and wait for one day you will come to the finish line and receive your prize. The world we live in is evil and to conduct ourselves as believers and walk in faith is difficult for everyone. Yet God tells us to overcome evil with good. He commands us to do good to those who hurt us, to turn our cheek when we are inflicted with pain, to be hospitable towards our enemies and see God taking the reins of vengeance for us. When you are tempted to repay evil with evil, take them to God in prayer and He will handle it. And always remember that the world is watching your every move like hawks. They will try to trap you, so don't give them any space to pin you down. But let your every move command you as faithful believer in Christ. In the meantime, ponder upon this. How is your relationship with your government and neighbors? Are you on good terms with them? How are you conducting yourselves as faithful believers in Christ in the outside world? Are you turning your other cheek to them? Or are you repaying them with evil? Well, friends, there is a lot more to be learned in how to lead a faithful life while living in a corrupted world. So stay tuned for more in the next episode of Through the Bible. God bless you. Mm -hmm.